Step number five of motivate yourself to succeed, overcome obstacles and naysayers. Part two out of seven for this step. Now, here's more on how to overcome obstacles and naysayers. For example, I don't let competition influence my thinking or decisions. I believe in myself and my products and that which I create. I believe that I have the ability to blow away the competition. I am all about branding, personalizing my books, products, and services, and I strive to make a personal connection with every client, prospect, fan, follower, subscriber, you name it. I stop and smile and take time and talk with them. I want them to know me, and I want to know them. Some don't know how to respond when I solicit their input. That's okay. They might question my motives or the value they're getting. But they're never disappointed because I work hard to deliver a unique experience that no one can copy. You know, for example, I might be out with my world-famous chocolate chip cookies, and I'll say, hey, want to try one? And they're like, uh, who are you? What's going on? What? Okay. Then they try it, and then they're like all smiles, like, oh my God, this is good. That kind of thing. I know my worth. I know what value I bring to the market. I know what value I bring to people's lives. And so do you. Again, they might question motives or the value you're bringing, but they're never disappointed because you work hard and you deliver a unique experience that no one can copy. Personally, I sell nothing because I don't have to, and neither do you. You know, this may all sound pretty simple, and it is. Just do it. There's an expression like, don't sell, tell. Tell a story. Talk to people. Find out. Ask questions. What do they need? What do they want? And then just direct them. Well, then if it would be uh, the blue, red, or green today, which one would you choose? Oh, I'll take the blue one. See how easy that is? You know, I try to learn something new from my competition, though. I dare to be different, inventive, and dazzle my audiences. And so should you. You got to love what you're doing. And that way, you can overcome any kind of obstacle or competitor in your way. Also, do you experience drudgery, having to do the work needed to get ahead? Very true. Toiling behind the scenes is not fun. Granted, if you're not having fun or about to have fun with what you're doing or what you're after, then you might reevaluate what it is that you're shooting for. That aside, what can you do to candy coat or to minimize the unpleasantness of something so that you can get through what it is that you have to get through? I know for me, in what I have to do sometimes, you know, working alone on projects for hours on end, for me, A bag of milk chocolate chips works. (laughs) I'm serious. I have like a bowl of of milk chocolate chips by my side and I'm just like guzzling them like "Mm, yum, 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 yum. And that chocolate in my brain just turns on that euphoric feeling of, oh, I don't mind doing this drudgery type work on the website or writing that book or whatever it is that you're doing. You know, or if you can, great music pulsating through your headphones at high volumes, pumping you up throughout the many hours that you're writing or building the, you know, something, whatever you're working on, you know, to generate revenue in a variety of ways. What works for some might not work for others. It's all right. What's your cup of tea? What's your bag of apples? Of course, with anything you ingest, like food, make sure you complement that with a rigorous workout to combat the calories that you might have taken in. (laughs) And that's so true. I say to myself, if I need the chocolate chips just to get into that creative spirit, okay, I want the creative spirit to come to me, you know. But then afterwards, like tomorrow, I'm going to have to work out like double, two workouts tomorrow to kind of burn those calories, you know. So do whatever it takes. But no, if you got to pay the the piper, you know, you might have to, you know. That's what you got to do. All right. Some will say that you discover passion through work, while others protest that they were inspired to do a particular thing and their passion drove the work. Well, the reality is that a lifelong passion generally surfaces throughout working passionately on something. Passion for what I do is in my bloodstream, flows through my veins. Maintaining balance is one of my personal secrets of success. Mm, You know, I know that because of my high octane schedule and how I run things, you know, my life and things, I know I couldn't do that without good food. Good food, like homemade food, meals that I cook. To ensure that I get the fuel that I need. I couldn't live on fast food. No way. It's empty calories, empty nutrients, no minerals, etc. I know that I've got to have that balance. If I'm going to work hard, I'm going to also supply the fuel and the energy I need, but I'm also going to play hard, you know? 
Good balance there. Also, follow your gut feeling, whether it proves right or wrong. Doesn't matter. Trust your instincts when you have to make tough decisions regarding changes or altering your path. At least you can say, hey, I gave it an honest effort. I tried. You know, I got no regrets. You know, winning isn't everything. Trying is, though. If you don't try, you'll never know if you could. Overcome the fear and do it anyway. You might realize afterward, hey, that wasn't that bad. You know, uh, Mary Pickford of the very early stage and screen made a brilliant statement. Failure is not falling down. It's not getting up again. That's failure. Our mistakes can be our own best teachers. So I just say, do it and get through it. You know? Yeah. Do you always need money to finance a dream? Mm, Dreams are free. But when you hold back from fulfilling your dream, it can cost you. You know, if you really need money and are unable to secure what you think you need, then consider this. Do some work on the side that will help fund your dream, if possible. Take on that extra job, sell something, etc. Asking for investment capital is fine if you can turn a profit to pay it back within a short time or a certain period of time. You know, if a friend or a family member loans money to you, just make sure that you retain 100% decision-making power. An investor that knows nothing about your business might make demands on your time, your enthusiasm, even financial prospects. So stay the course 100% you. Remember, you're the captain of your destiny's ship. And they're just along for the ride, so to speak. The last thing you need is some backseat driver, the investor, calling you up, asking you why things aren't moving along as scheduled or why profits aren't coming in soon enough for them to get their money back. If you do go around asking for money and you get rejected time after time, that's a sign. The universe is trying to send you a message. You are not to take other people's money. You can do this on your own. It may take time, but in the end, when the monies are coming in, you will owe no one nothing, let alone credit for your success. You know, can you just hear it right now? An investor just invested just a little bit of money. You made it big and they take all the credit for making you the star you are. No, I don't think so. Be hesitant to use solo investors that will seek recognition for your success. That's BS. The last thing you need is someone claiming ownership for your success just because they financed you. You know, banks finance businesses, but they don't boast, you know, for the most part, about their success because they financed those businesses now. Maybe to some degree, but not a majority of the time. They get paid back their money plus interest, and they're done with that account. You know, no emotion, no credit, no fanfare, nothing. It's these solo investors that you have to watch out for and be careful about. They want their own glory through your hard work. Forget that. Again, if you do need funds to buy product or inventory or to start up some kind of services, then by all means, hey, go for it. Just pay it back quickly. And if possible, And keep the money you do borrow low. If you must borrow money, make it a manageable sum. You don't want to complicate your life because you took on more debt than you could afford to pay back. You know, $15,000, for example, is a small number to borrow. But it all depends on what you're doing. You might require a six-figure investment or more. Well, then you better have plans to make that much money and more so you can get out from underneath that thumb. If you're dealing at that level and your investor is good to you, letting you run things, or is a partner with you, that's a different story. And I wish you both tremendous success. Bottom line, don't lose control over your dream. Don't lose ownership over who's responsible for you accomplishing your dream and everything else that falls into this particular category. If you can, try making it on your own. And with no one owing you or owning you, as you move along your dream track. Don't use money as an excuse for not realizing where you're meant to be in life, for sure. And I'll just drop this quick little story. Got a friend of mine, he's partners with someone. He does the management of the day-to-day affairs and the other partner 
does all the money managing. He's the investor. He brought the capital. He brought the money. But boy, did this person turn out to be a big a-hole. And I hate to say that and use that phrase, but boy, what a jerk. What a meanie. No personality. Everybody hates him. But the partner, you know, my friend actually, he's beside himself. Oh my gosh, if I only would have known, I could have gotten my money somewhere else with a little more, or actually a little less, personality connection, you know, being involved with me. Maybe like a bank, you know, just go to the bank, they give you the money, you don't, you make your payments, blah, blah, blah. But just be careful who you partner with or who you get money from because they can turn ugly. And if they turn ugly, then there goes your dream. And even myself, I used to kind of, when I was younger, I used to go around, hey, can I borrow some money? I want to fund my inventory and my dream and do this and that. And, and I got all these no's and no's and not right now and all these excuses, you know, whatever. And I just said, Lord, what's going on? And the universe responded, you're not meant to get that money from those people. Keep kicking. Keep working on your dream. Keep doing it your way. Living on a dime. Just scraping by. Blah, blah, blah. And before you know it, to date, and I can just say, to date, it's all mine. It's all me. I don't have anybody saying, well, I helped make Bart, you know, I helped finance his success. No, 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 no. I don't want that for you either. Mm. Yeah.